thank you Allah for this day. We thank you Allah once again for bringing us into your sanctuary. We thank you for all the things that you've done in our life. As we are about to listen to your message, O Lord. Touch our hearts, Father. Bless your message, Father. Consecrate the tongue that will deliver it. At the end of this session, O Lord, let us have every cause to glorify your holy name. Father, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Uh, please be seated. We shall be taking our reading this morning for the book of Second Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Second Peter, chapter 1, verses 1 to 10. Simon Peter, a servant and apostle of Jesus Christ, to them that have obtained like precious faith with us through the righteousness of God and our Savior, Jesus Christ. Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, according as his divine power has given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that hath called us to glory and virtue, whereby are given unto us exceeding great and precious promises, that by these ye might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. And beside this, given all diligence, add to your faith virtue, and to virtue knowledge, and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness, charity. For if these things be in you and abound, they make you that ye shall neither be barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he that lacketh these things is blind and cannot see afar off, and hath forgotten that he was purged from his old sins. We are for the rather bread then give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, you shall never fall. May God bless his holy word. Amen. The theme for this morning is holiness. Holiness. Hallelujah. It's holiness. Holiness is a word that we have all heard being used to describe those who have separated themselves from things that are evil. Sometimes we refer to things or objects that have been consecrated or sanctified. Have we ever wondered or asked ourselves where this precious word, holiness, originated from? Surely, holiness must have been ascribed to something that is permanently holy. And any other thing that does not conform to that permanent state of holiness is unholy or evil. Holiness, you will agree with me, is the chief attribute of God. In the Old Testament, holiness, when applied to God, refers to his supreme rule over the creations and to the moral perfection of his character. God is holy in that he has distinct himself from his creations, and his majesty is supreme over everything. The psalmist King David was a man after God's own heart. And he understood the magnitude of God's holiness. As he expressed in Psalm 47 verse 8, God reigns over the nations. God sits in his holy temple. In the Old Testament, God also revealed his attributes to prophet Ezekiel. In Ezekiel 39 7, my holy name. I will make known in the midst of my people Israel. And I will not let my holy name be profaned anymore. And the nations will know that I am the Lord, the Holy One in Israel. The scripture in the Holy Bible attributed holiness only to God. God is referred to as the Holy One. 
as we will read in Isaiah 57, 15. For thus says the high and exhausted one who lives forever, whose name is holy. I dwell on a high and holy place, and also with the contrite and lowly of spirit, in order to revive the spirit of the Lord and to revive the heart of the contract. And in Isaiah 43, 15, God confirmed his attributes to the children of Israel. I am the Lord, your Holy One, the Creator of Israel, your King. If God is holy, as we all know and realize, how can it be possible for us in our state of sinfulness to be able to worship Him or have Him? In the Old Testament, God's holiness means that the Lord is separated from all that is evil and defied, as Job perceived it even at the time of his afflictions. When he was communing with his friends, he said in chapter 34, 10 of Job, Therefore, listen to me, you men of understanding. Far be it from God to do wickedly, and from the Almighty to do wrong. For he pays a man according to his works and makes man find it according to his ways. Job realized that no one can escape the watchful eyes of God. God cannot be mocked. Neither can he be manipulated. The psalmist also confirmed the only presence of God, as we read in Psalm 139, 1 to 16. I just read part of it. O oh Lord, thou hast searched me and known me. Thou hast nursed my down sitting and my uprising. Thou understand my thought afar off. Whither shall I go from thy spirit? Or whither shall I flee from thy presence? And verses 15 to 16. My substance was not hid from thee. When I was made in secret and curiously wrought in the lowest parts of the earth, that as did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuous were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. King David realized there is no hiding place for sinners before God. That is a message of exhortation from God through his servants to us, which we have often heard, and yet seemed not to understand or care to really grasp the true nature of God's omnipresence. Amen. King David had gone through all stages of life and human existence that you can think of.